Good evening, everybody. This is your host, Huge Pop, and the Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast. We are wrestling with purpose. We are Rico, Reek, Reek, and Huge Pop himself are here tonight. We're just going to talk wrestling because we haven't talked wrestling in quite a bit of time, Rico and I. Uh, we're going to go through everything from AEW Dynasty to SmackDown from Friday to how shitty those raw tag team belts look <laughs> to you name it we're gonna go over a lot of stuff so um i don't know we could talk i mean let's let's sit back and talk about first what's the major big thing that even pertains to monday night raw tonight and that's i hate to say it i hate this idea i hate seeing anything happen but man rico last monday when rhea ripley walks into the ring and you know, lays down the title and says, I have to give it up because I'm injured. Right. Well, when she said, you already know what's going on, it was kind of like, yeah, when somebody walks down with the title, not very happy looking, and they got a brace on or something like that, it's never good news. No. You know, and that's and it sucks because it's never good news. And as much as I crap on her all the time because of the Judgment Day, you hate seeing stuff like that happen. I mean, it's just, you don't ever wish anything on that, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, look at uh, Roman Reigns when he gave up the title, you know? He had to give it up. Everybody was hating on him, but that moment, that moment when he announced that he had to relinquish the title due to leukemia, everyone got on board with him, supported yeah. him immediately. Yeah, you know, Becky Lynch when she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, no, was it Becky Lynch? Yeah, yeah, Becky. Because remember, that's when Oscar won the money in the bank. Yeah, and she's like, "I got a surprise for you." You know, it was actually the title. But did you see what I liked was that reaction from Oscar was a genuine reaction, like yes. she didn't know. Yeah, like she's like, "You mother." <laughs> yes, you know, and it's like. You know, you like stuff like that is good to see in a business, you know, and um, you know, they have this big uh Monday night, they have this big match tonight. I think it's a isn't it a, a, a not a battle royal, but they have some match going on tonight for that title. You know, I, I knew what was gonna happen, but after Friday I kind of lost track because so it says uh da, 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 the the how town of the um, there's a big, I guess there's a, there's some kind of match that's going to, um, settle the score. Who's the next world's champion. But so on the raw roster, who would be that late, that girl, who's the one, who's the next one. I mean, honestly, just being honest, but wait a minute. Are they having that tonight or are no. they having that for the. After the draft. Yeah, see, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. I have no Monday Night Raw. I'm going to look. I'm pulling Monday Night Raw up. But I'm gonna just because my, my thought process on that, man, is um, and I'm not knocking any of the girls on Raw. Out of the ones that are on Raw right now, I would say it's either Natty or Liv. Right. But there is where I say you throw a throw a little toss up in there and on the draft you have Tiffany Stratton go to Raw and she becomes a contender. So there's a battle royal tonight. Battle royal for the vacant women's title. Um after the announcement of Rhea Ripley that she must vacate the women's title due to injury and new champion will now be crowned in the live in a battle royal on Monday Night Raw. The battle royal will c- consist of Becky Lynch, Shayna Baszler, Joe Zoe Starks, Natalia Tegan Knox, Ivy Nile, Maxine Dupree, Katana Chance, Caden Carter, Nia Jax, Liv Morgan, Piper Niven, Chelsea Green, Candice LeRae, and Indy Hartwell. I'm going to say it's going to come down to Becky or Nia. And I'm going with Nia. You know, and I'm not going to say you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. I'm not going to say, but I... I personally would bring it down to Becky Lynch, 
Unfortunately, Nia Jax, yeah. And even Liv Morgan. It makes sense for Liv Morgan to be in there in that final, near the final, near the end of it, because she's the one that took uh, Rhea Ripley out. Mm-hmm. Back if you remember right. Yeah, and that's why, like, when she did the interview on Monday and stuff, you know, I was like, I think they, you know, might give her a push. Right. So I don't know, man. I, I, I would go with Becky Lynch. I'd like to see Becky Lynch and um, Liv Morgan in the at, at the end. And we yeah. can talk. We can talk about the results tomorrow when we um when we show up again tomorrow cool. on the Top Wrestling Podcast. So sorry, I just want to change it real quick because now really thinking about it, I, I really believe that Liv's going to take it. Really thinking about how things have been going down. Right. I mean, because you can obviously you can have Becky take it, and you know she can carry that belt. Right. But. We've talked about it before. Becky doesn't need a belt to be Becky. No. And Liv Morgan, I think it's her time. I think she needs I think she's earned it. I think she's needed needs it. And I wouldn't be I wouldn't be hurt if she does win it. It'd be in my opinion, Liv Morgan. But what about the surprise entrant if if she's coming back tonight? Who would that be? Alexa Bliss. That would be sick. I mean Again, yeah, there's a lot that could happen. I mean, Alexa Bliss could come back. You could see a a start of the the fiend or you know bad era again. All I know is what has happened in the last couple of weeks with SmackDown mostly and Raw. You're gonna see a lot of stuff that we have not been used to seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, Ko, I mean, I'll say this and just bring this up before we talk about SmackDown. But Ko came out of the back. So bloodied up. That's a thing that Triple H wants to do but couldn't do, but now we can. Mm-hmm. And it's just like it's like introducing the the an old a new era to professional wrestling. And um, I'm excited. Yeah. But so would it be out of the out of the question that uh that Alexa Bliss comes back and puts your I that would be okay with me. I'd be okay with that. Because I mean, I, I was I, I've really been thinking about Alexa just because of the whole like um the barcode you scan it, yep. it shows that picture, and you know I I can't remember who put it up, but it was something where it showed uh, that picture, then a sculpture, and then it yeah. went to a more defined picture, and it was uh, Alexa Bliss and the Ab- Abigail the Witch okay. outfit. And I just said, "Whoa, that that would look sweet." I, I mean, because be... it, all the pieces coming together, you know, um, Bo and Taylor, yeah. you know, talking about, you know, like he he wants to come back and kind of bring that stuff back, and they're giving us these hints like they used to with Bray when he was about to come back. Yeah, I would not be upset if you seen um, Uncle Howdy. Come nope. back. That'd be freaking cool. And that mm-hmm. you know, there I would be cool to have him just come back and you know Alexa Bliss be with him. She wouldn't even have to be in that battle royal. Nope. Her just being on Raw again would be amazing. Or I mean, like for me, like the best way to do it, not best way to do it, but one of the great ways to do it is have a beef with someone yeah. who's in the battle royal. She That's pops true. up out of nowhere, lights go out, she come back on, there she is, and causes that person to get eliminated. Yeah. I can't and she remember. Kind of does what, the tormenting. Who what who did she have beef out of the, out of that list that we named? Who was she with the last having a beef with? Um was it? Who was that? I don't know if they're on the list or not at all. I mean who was Alexa? The last person she really kind of battled against back and forth was Naya. Naya? I mean, maybe she tossed Naya Jax the um mm-hmm. the last the winner the, to win the battle royal. And again, there Liv Morgan is to clean up the mess. And I don't know. Well, because re- remember years ago when Alexa cashed in her money in the bank and beat Naya for the belt. Yeah. Naya's really never forgiven her for that. 
Nope, not at all. Not at all. So, yeah. So that Battle Royals tonight, sadly to say, you know, um, we've seen the end. You know, we're, we won't see the end of Rhea Ripley. She'll be back. And when she mm-hmm. comes back, I'm sorry, whoever has the belt, you're in for a world of hurt. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Whoever gets it, when she comes back, it's game time. Yeah, and it's sad. You, you hate to see that happen. You hate to see people go through that, you know. And you know, we're talking about it well, while we're on female wrestlers that have to step away. Um, I think Saturday night or Friday night AEW, um, Ruby Soho told announced that she has to step away because she's pregnant. That's so, right. I heard about that. So she in the middle of the ring. She I, I, she's dating a guy. And of course, I'm don't don't hate me for not knowing, but a, an AEW superstar is her husband, and uh, she told him live in the ring that she's pregnant. And uh, so that was pretty cool to see her. You know, and I, she's one of my favorite female wrestlers. I love seeing her. She's I good. Mean, I think on her. I said this before a year about a, six to eight months ago. She's one of those girls that gets underutilized, if that makes any sense, mm-hmm. for what she's what, for what how good she is. Unless I don't know good wrestling, and maybe I just like the stuff, like the person. But I think that AEW underutilized her, WWE underutilized her. She's phenomenal, and it's just like, come on, guys, let's. When are you, now you get now you're not going to be able to for another nine or ten months. Yep. And, you know, I said the same thing, man, because you watched her in WWE, you know, the Riot Squad, and then she started doing stuff by herself, and you've seen her going like this, and all of a sudden she just stays like this, and then yeah. she's gone. Yeah. And she goes to AEW, I was like, all right, sweet, you know, here we go. She's going to get a chance to shine. Yeah. Eh, not really. Not really, not really, not really. So, But, yeah, those are just two of the announcements of – the female wrestlers that uh, have been put on the shelf, so to speak, whether it's from being pregnant or being injured. So it's sad to see that, but you know, you wish them well, you wish them the um, the very best and hope to see them back again. And so that's, so that's a good question for you, Rico with Rhea Ripley going away. My opinion, and again, it's only my opinion. Now, my opinion does not have to be Rico's opinion. does not have to be anybody else's opinion on the show or people watching. It's just my opinion. Is My opinion, I feel that that's going to hurt the direction that the Judgment Day is going. I mean, I, I honestly do have to agree with that because whether you like it or not, and I believe everybody would agree with what I'm about to say, Rhea is the main attraction of Judgment Day. She she really is. Nothing against and even Damien. Damien's freaking awesome. I love him. Yeah. Yep. But this is where I see Damien, and this is where I see Rhea. Mm-hmm. And so I just I don't. Yeah. No, I agree with you. She is. But do, definitely... do you have to to keep that faction going? I think you have two choices. You break it up. And somehow mix the 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 um the draft in it, or you add it, the winner of the Royal Rumble or the Battle Royal, and she it gets helped by Judgment Day on this Battle Royal, and she comes in with the belt to replace Rhea Ripley, and in that state you better have somebody like. Uh, it would make sense to bring Liv Morgan there, <laughs> mm. and that would be a you could go jealousy ways. But I, what do you do with them? I I don't know. I I don't know what you would do with the Judgment Day because, in my opinion, like you said, Rhea Ripley's the main attraction. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Not taking nothing away from Damian, um, you know, Damian Priest. But that's the only belt that's left there. They don't have tag team belts no more. Mm -mm. Dirty Dom is Dirty Dom. JD McDumb Dumb is doing whatever. And all you got is Damian Priest. And I to me, the faction worked because you had a badass and a bad bitch. Mm -hmm. 
and that's what made that's what made Judgment Day. See, I I think the the way to make them work and to keep them together to show their strength is you have Finn getting the Intercontinental title. And then JD and Dirty Dom can get the tag titles. That's the right. only way I see that faction staying together and staying strong. Damien can hold it together. He really can. But it's not going to be as powerful without Rhea. Right. You know, and I, hey, I'm not taking anything against Ricochet and Andrade. Not at all. But they got a match tonight against Dominic, Dom Dom and JD. And I'm, I'm like, okay, there's the Judgment Day thing. And I'm like, uh, it's not exciting. It's just not exciting. And I hate to say it. It's not Rhea's fault for getting hurt. But Judgment Day is going to, they're going to need to do something to keep it interesting, at least. And I don't know how they're going to work that in. I have no idea. Man, uh, I, it, I hope it happens. I highly doubt it's going to happen. But I think to make the Judgment Day even better than what it is and more relevant is you have Andrade turn and join them. That's that would make he, sense. Uh, he he reminds me of Ted DiBiase, Mr. Perfect. Yeah, they are just great heels. Yeah, he is a great heel. He's a good face, but man, when he's a heel, it's just money. Do you think it's something at the a line of where tonight maybe he turns on Ricochet and joins the Judgment Day? I actually have my fingers crossed. I'm hoping that that's what happens because they have to. Do, I mean. Not to, I mean, I know we're all over the place, but but to keep the Judgment Day relevant, mm-hmm. and they have to keep relevant because that's raw. You got to keep relevant to compete with SmackDown because SmackDown's got a hell of a story going on, and it's not about Cody Rhodes. Well, and and that, here's the thing, um, yeah, I mean, because we already know the draft, Cody's going to SmackDown because he's the WWE champion. Right. So he'll be going there. But this is what I was going to say. You look at the comparison, not knocking any of the wrestlers or anything, but look at who Raw has and who SmackDown has. Raw, you have Damian Priest. I mean, you got Rio. She's hurt right now. You got Becky Lynch. You got Nia. You got Finn. You got Seth, who Seth is probably going to take some time to heal. Yep. Um, you got Drew McIntyre. You got Sami Zayn. You got Gunther. You know, you got quite a few good people. Right. And and I'm not going to forget, you know, that whole heel turn on Chad Gable. We'll talk about that. But yeah, that was awesome. Awesome. Um, You look at SmackDown, man. SmackDown, you know, you got the bloodline, just the bloodline alone. Not even putting anybody else in there. The bloodline alone takes all the attention. But then. Now you got Cody Rhodes going to be on there, you know, and you got that. We, we got to see what's going to happen with Jimmy. He's not going to go away quietly. And we know that Roman's going to come back. So that's going to be freaking awesome. You got LA Knight. You got AJ Styles. You got the Street Profits. You know, you got a Tom down under. And oh, sorry, I forgot to mention Sheamus came back on Raw. That was awesome. I like Sheamus. Except for he's out of shape as shit. <laughs> yeah, he's not like he used to be. No, dude. Sure. I was like, you got too many <laughs> cookies off your break. What are you doing? No. But and, and with the girls, sorry, I'll make it short. With the girls, look, look at the girls. You have the tag team now with Jade and Bianca. You got damage control. You got Charlotte, who's on, still on the shelf, but she's coming back. You got Tiffany Stratton. You got Naomi. You got this. I just think SmackDown's got a better roster. So, but you talk about the draft. No, dad, no one, there's no guess. It's just me and Rico talking wrestling. So, if you want to talk wrestling, hey, this is your place to be. If you don't, <laughs> then I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, no guests lined up. Sorry. Um, But, here's my question, man. Um, Hey, hold on. Just a second, Rico. Go ahead and talk. No, I just, uh, I hope everybody 
kind of sees where I'm going with that. Not knocking anybody on Raw, but yeah. Uh, give a shout out. We have a comment. Let me know if you agree or not that SmackDown has the better roster. I personally believe they do. They've shown it. They Their storylines just gel better. Than so I got a question, Rico. Yes. I'm not a booker. I think I'd like to think I'm be okay doing whatever. At least I think I would do this. Because SmackDown has the bloodline and the not and the the Jay Cargill tag team and Kevin Owens and A Town Down, all those guys, right? Would would it be beneficial? For Damian Priest to bring his title over to SmackDown with the Judgment Day, so follow me, and put Cody Rhodes on Raw, where there's no, there's a weaker, a weaker roster to give him more of the attention because right now on SmackDown, in my opinion, again, it's just as a fan looking in, SmackDown, in my opinion, is all about the Usos right now. All about the bloodline and all the directions that Solo Soko, which is a dumbass looking freaking Roman Reigns. I'll just go say that. I can't stand that stupid person in a in a in a suit. That was that was awful. Anyway. Um, but do you see what I'm saying? Mate, because I I believe in my heart, I'm I'm not you know, I'm not the greatest fan of Cody Rhodes, but with the bloodline storyline that's going on over at SmackDown, I think he will get lost in the shuffle, and it would be just a piss in the wind champion. I don't want to see that for him. I want to see him build his own story. I just don't see you can. I don't think he can do it with the Usos on that show. But the bloodline, that's just that's why I watch. I don't watch it for Cody Rhodes. I watch it for. The bloodline. So that's that stuff's gold. Everybody watches it for the ones. That's right. So is it a bad idea for Cody Rhodes to take that bout to SmackDown? Uh, I don't know. I it's hard because they I'm looking at it from the business side where they've already got all the world champions are going to be on Raw. SmackDown's going to be WWE champions. But now, what? A big what? Big, big what? <laughs> what if the bloodline goes to Raw and Judgment Day goes to SmackDown and Damien stays on Raw? I don't know. That that's the thing I love about the draft. You just don't know what's going to happen, right? And you know what my concern is about this draft coming up and where the talent is is. I said it when when Cody Rhodes finished his story. He can't be in the same show as the Usos, but there's not going to. I don't think it's going to work. They're not going to have. You're going to have two two parts of the show. Cody Rhodes part and the Usos part and everything else is going to get blown. Bleh. It's going to be garbage. I think I just don't know. And if you look at money, if you look at rating wise, I I don't know. I don't know. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Go ahead, chat. Just give me one quick second. It's interesting to me that um. I don't know anybody out there that I don't know if anybody agrees with me. I think that um it's it's gonna be a hard it's gonna be hard to have both Roman Reigns and the Uso not Roman, I'm sorry, Cody Rhodes and the Usos on the same show. It's gonna be hard, I think, and it it's not gonna equal to give them the space that they need. Because if they want Cody Rhodes on the as a champion, they're gonna have to give him the space. They're gonna have to give him the storyline, they're gonna have to give him everything, you know what I'm saying? That's what I. That's what my fear is, and that's why fear was, was when they when they had him finish the story. There was it's. I just I hope the same thing AEW. I hope WWE is smarter than that and doesn't do what they did with Cody Rhodes at AEW. Well, before I, you I know it, they will. 
I hope not, because before you know it, Cody Rhodes was a mid. Mm -hmm. And he deserves something better than being a mid. Well, look, look at his first title defense, man. Yeah. Look at his first title defense. That's no joke. That's freaking AJ Styles. Yes. I'm glad AJ got that. I mean, I'm out. He beat LA Knight for that, right? Mm hmm. You know, I'm an LA Knight fan, and we talked about this last week. We all said, and I think maybe, maybe you were the only one that disagreed. We all agree that right now, AJ really doesn't need a belt. But that man has put in the work. And if you look at that son of a gun, you'll see what I'm talking about. He is Jack. Yes. Up, bigger than, better than ever. And it's, it's, it won't happen. Whoever thinks he's going to get, whoever thinks he could, Cody Rhodes can get beat by AJ Styles is out there. God love in mind. But that's more real of a realistic challenge. Mm -hmm. The phenomenal one. And that's going to be, that's going to be a banger of a match. And, you know, I, I, I do agree with you guys saying that he doesn't need a belt. He really doesn't. Just me personally, I think he deserves it. Okay, he so here's the really question. Deserves it. Here's the question, Rico. You were a Cody Rhodes fan. You wanted Cody Rhodes to win the belt to finish the story. Oh, well, let, let, let's get one thing straight. I'm all about Roman. Okay. <laughs> you guys know I'm all about Roman. But you're but on this. Yes. You're I on said that he should finish the story. You're on a Cody Rhodes train. You were the Ro you know what? Well, finish the one, be the one. For AJ Styles, for anybody to realistic, how do I say this? That would be a hell of a fight. That's going to be a realistic fight. That's going to be, yes, I, I, I have no questions asked there. But realistically, do you think they'll take, they could, they would take the title off Cody Rhodes a month after he won it? No. Not There's after no beating someone like Roman. Right. You that, just, that would be beyond ridiculous. Now, do they have to save that title to lose the title? They have to save it till, Ro till Rock or Roman Reigns come back? I, I think because I, I just say this because Roman had that built up so well that if you don't lose it to Roman, you better lose it to somebody who's up there because I mean, and AJ is up there. So you'd put AJ, uh, AJ Styles on the same fresh threshold as Roman Reigns. Eh, sorry. Sorry, AJ. I love you, but I put Roman just a little I mean, higher. I, he's great. He's good. I mean, AJ's one of the best. I didn't say that. I'm just I, I say AJ's a better worker, like wrestler. Okay. That's fair. AJ's a better wrestler. That's fair. Hands down. Love your Roman. Sorry, but AJ is the better wrestler. That's fair. Roman is the better entertainer. Yes. That's why um, I kind of, you know, the business that they're in, I, I put Roman just a little bit higher than AJ. Um, so there's rumors out there that um, I think tonight you're going to see uh, another match. I don't like this, but awesome truth. Miz and our truth versus DIY, DIY for the world tag team titles. Question I have for you, Rico. Awesome Truce tag team title range. Rain. Should it be short lived? Or will it be short lived? It will be short lived. You think so? But, I mean, like I said, this is Hunter's game. We don't know. Because he's got the utmost respect for truth. He truly does. And for the Miz. You, you look at, we talked about it last week. Miz is one of those guys who have never, has, knock on wood, has not got injured. Did not have to take time off or anything. He worked everything around wrestling. Everything he's done, he worked his schedule around wrestling. And, it, you know, Vince even said himself years ago, it was like, you know, Miz is, you ask him to do something, boom, he's there. Yeah. No questions asked. So, I wonder just out of, you know, how devoted they are that they get a, a, a medium reign. Not very long, but not like they're going to lose it tonight. 
So what, what's the conversation is, um, and I'm taking this from, uh, I take a lot of information that I read on is from Bleacher Report. So I am saying this, it's not my, I do, I do read some stuff off of Bleacher Report. So no copyright there. They're saying there's so one of the people on Bleach, Bleacher Report says, if DYI loses to our truth in the Miz, this will be the third time in three months that DIY falls short of the gold. These guys believe to save their their anything to be salvaged from their career, DIY, short of breaking them up. A move to SmackDown would be the only way to um, save them and re, re, ver, refurbish them. So do they, do, do you see a, is the better option to have them lose and regroup with them on SmackDown or just now just take the belts off our truth and the Miz to have them, the belt stay on raw and give DIY the push that they probably deserved. I mean, Gargano and Champa probably deserved this two years ago. Coming out of mm-hmm. NXT, so I. But then, if you do take it off off for our truth, what are you going to do? Put them back in the stupid gimmick role? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's just a conversation that we could probably have for quite a while. So, what's your thoughts on that? Well, uh, you just said it right there. It's like Truth, who has played the gimmick role over and over. He's freaking great. He, he nails it every time. But it's like someone like that who can wrestle. You watch him wrestle, you're like, man, this guy can wrestle. And, but if you keep him in a gimmick role, you know, it's just you're, you're not giving him that chance to, you're not giving him that push. Right. And that's where I see that they are going to get a push. So I, I say, yeah, DIY, actually, I think it may be better for them to go to SmackDown. Because in this article, they're talking about when Cody Rhodes won the belt at WrestleMania, it was about the story. Everything was about the story. All, mm-hmm. all parts of it. And they're saying this Miz and R-Truth uh, winning the top, the belts at the ladder match was about the moment. The moment compared to the story. The storyline, we talk about moments all the time. Mm-hmm. We'll remember that moment with our truth I remember many moments with our truth with the belts and stuff. <laughs> is it okay to be about the moments? And is that a good enough reason why they don't need the titles anymore? Because it was about it created that moment. No, I think they need the title just a little bit longer. I yeah. really do. I do I think that I think that I think so too. I think it's a joke if they it's a joke on WWE if WWE gives the belts to our truth and the Miz. And then you take it away the next two weeks later. That's that's ridiculous. Well, uh, let's look at this. Let's look at the stats and who has been or who is still wrestling right now that has been there longer than Miz and R-Truth. That's a history question, dude, and I have no idea. Because um, if you look at the roster, nobody. Nobody, no. And I just say that because, you know, they are probably coming up towards the end to where they might hang it up, start doing some backstage stuff or something else. Right. Yeah. You know, it's time. Let them let them fully shine while they still can. Right. Right. You know, and so that switches from the WWE, R-Truth and the Miz and their tag team title runs. Should they have it? Should they not? Um, something happened on Dynasty last night, AEW Dynasty, that I'm like, eh, not sure if I would have done that. Of course, a lot of people would say that about Tony Khan and his habits that he does and how he picks matches, how he picks winners. Yeah, where, where's Cody at, man? I love his <laughs> Cody Khan responses. <laughs> I mean, I'll be sure to bring it up tomorrow night because I want to hear his response. But um, interesting as it is, last night, we all know who Hook is. If I don't know who Hook is, I'll give you an education. Taz from the WCW, WWE. We know him as Taz. Great phenomenal wrestler. Great great announcer for WCW. ECW guy. 
the man is a genius. That's when wrestling was cool. Wrestling's getting cooler now. But Taz has a son named Hook. Hook is a young man in AEW trying to get his way up. Last night they had a match. It was Jericho versus Hook. And if as a fan looking outside before that match even happened, I think Riku and I Riku would agree with me. We say this about a lot of wrestlers. They do not need to win. They need to be putting kids over. Mm-hmm. Uh, Damian Wayne was on the other night with um with uh Christian Black, Christian Blake, ND wrestler. That combinate that conversation happened there too. Damian Wayne says, Hey, if I don't win, that's good. But what my job is when I come into these indie promotions is to put people over. Mm-hmm. You know, he's 52 years old. Damian Wayne don't need to win another another match. He's he's gold. Let's fast forward to AEW last night. Chris Jericho doesn't need to win another title. But unfortunately, that last night, AEW Dynasty, Chris Jericho became the I don't know what title he um what was it? The uh FTW? Something like that. Yeah, the FTW. He won the FTW. Well, that title don't make shit to anybody anyways, but FTW over the whatever, one of their titles over AEW. And he put and Chris Jericho beat Hook, and I'm like, why? So I don't know if there's anybody out there watching that knows about wrestling. Tell me why Chris Jericho needed to win and beat Hook. Adrian Whispers in the house. It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. Hey, Adrian. Adrian Whisper. Going on, like, man. Let's, let's, get th- let's get your opinion on this. We're just talking AEW, D- Dynasty, and um, et cetera, et cetera. Did Jer- Chris Jericho need to be Hook, or should he have put Hook over? That's your first question. Yeah, I, I'm going to answer before he does. I don't think he should have put him or I think he should have put him over. Sorry. He did not need to win that. That, that kind of reminds me of some WCW times when guys, the elderly guys are winning that don't need to win. They should be putting people over. Yeah. So yeah, that's, I, yeah, I, I agree, man. So being that the boss is in the house, um, I will tell it. Rico asked me this last or earlier before we went out. We went live, so but I'm gonna answer the question, Rico. Rico and I were part of the um, controversial Inc. and uh, Lacro. La, how do we say the name? Lacora, uh, the mystery partner tag team <laughs> um, against uh, controversial Inc. on uh, Thursday. Money's on the chase. The more he gets fucked, the more he me- I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I get that. I guess so. I guess so, and I wish, I wish they would have used that for Cody Rhodes too. There's more money in the chase. Well, that makes sense. I guess the money's in the chase. So yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyways, probably my favorite part of this uh, of uh, XIW Extreme Impact Wrestling on Saturday, Rico, was um, controversial Inc. Lacra or whatever their name is, Lacor. Lacor I don't know. Ray Fury. Anyways. They were fighting. They, of course, uh, controversial link. You know they're by... going to come on, just as, not to interrupt you, they're going to come on here and give you so much crap. Well. For slaughtering um, their name. Yep. Oh, well, <laughs> who cares? Anyways, of course, uh, controversial link won in controversial fashion. And at the end of the, at the end of the match, we went to, um, to a break, a, you know, 15-minute break. And um, while I was there, Ray Fury came over and they were talking and all of a sudden we got interrupted by controversial ink and a back a a brawl ensued right around the podcast booth and guys from the back came in and they started damon wayne came in jackson slay came in all those guys and came in and they uh but went away from the booth went out the audience and stuff like that and it was just insane and uh it was about because controversial ink thought they're their time was abused by the Lucha Boys, and um, so that happened. So it was fun. And Adrian Whisper had to come in and put his two cents in. So 
but all around good show rico i i i if i was you i'd watch it um none of that was scripted either i didn't think so but i was like damn but um it was you watched the show it was it was interesting it was different for xiw would you agree it was different for xiw there wasn't as any blood at like normal but um it was fun and it was a good turnout i think adrian said there was over like about 200 people in the audience so it was pretty packed um but yeah go ahead and watch that show man and you'll, you'll love it so oh, yeah. yeah hook hook one hook beat ft um hook beat jericho beat hook then the only thing that happened on AEW last night was, in my opinion, was stupid as shit. The young sucks. The young bucks. Um, the EF, the EVPs, got their way into a championship match, and they uh, came out uh, tag team champions for AEW. And at the end of the day, guess who shows up? Good old Jack Perry guy that was involved in the chaos mm -hmm. well last chaos was cm puck and now he's teaming up with um the young, the young bucks. bucks so i'm like eh but uh so yeah that was um aw last night so uh smackdown man yeah see or sorry and I, i'm gonna t say this i don't dislike aw but it's not like back when you paid for a pay-per-view for WWE. I'd be throwing down for that $60 to watch that pay-per-view. AEW, I said, nah, I can wait. <laughs> you know, I was like, I can wait. Right. Oh, and I forgot. Yes, watch this. Adrian, I didn't, I was almost positive you were straight shooting there. But um, there was a moment, so I'll speed you up a little bit, uh, Rico, on a uh, storyline that's been going on for two years. Uh, Jackson Slade is Adrian Whisper's bio son. Okay. Okay. Jackson Slade has been traveling the roads with Adrian Whisper when Adrian Whisper was a wrestler. Now, Jackson Slade, fast forward, Jackson Slade comes into XIW and he's winning, and his, but his dad is screwing him over. So Adrian Whisper screwed him over for the past year and a half. Blah, blah, blah. They've had this this thing going back and forth, war going back and forth. And then John Saxton, who is uh, just a guy on the, a, a, or the XIW roster, he comes in and he takes Jackson Slade by the, you know, by the arm and just tells him to come over to his side and he'll show you what a loving dad is, blah, 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 blah. We'll make money. We'll do this, do that, do this, do that. Chaos in the cage. John Saxton, Jackson Slade and Vordell Walker were champions going into Chaos in the Cage under John Saxon's fully, you know, control. They came out of Chaos in the Cage, now not champions. So I've been giving them shit. I've been giving John Saxon shit about being a puppeteer, being a loser, taking talent and making them lose their belts, et cetera, et cetera. So on Saturday, this whole storyline went to the next level. And they had to name a new commissioner of XIW. Mm -hmm. Well, that new commissioner ended up being announced as John Saxon's firstborn child. Mm -hmm. This boy rolls up in a wheelchair. Obviously, uh, I don't know if he's what the condition really is, so I'm not going to say that, but he's obviously in a medical condition. And Adrian Whisper went, you'll see it on the video, he went full you're a shitty dad mode on John Saxon. And John Saxon was almost in tears. It was that good. Right. But that's bringing real emotions out. And that's what makes it awesome right there. Yes. And that's what XIW is about. They, they bring broke his neck. Okay. Broke his neck and above the bronc and above ground pool. So, but the storyline is now John was more about his John Saxon more about his career than caring about his son. Where Jackson, where John, where um, where Adrian Whisper was the dad that brought J Jackson Slade along with him on the road trips. At least he was there for his son, Jackson. When John Saxon left his son because his son was paralyzed, so it's a good story. 
good first introduction to that story. It, it was. It, it's going to be good. XIW. It's going to be good for the next two next year with if they run this storyline. So we'll see. Twenty twenty four is going to be interesting. But um. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, let's talk about these stupid looking belts. I cannot stand the tag team belts for Raw, especially after seeing the new tag team um, belts for SmackDown. It, it really just looks like a miniaturized world title. Yes. Like da- Damien's title, just a little bit smaller. <laughs> yes. You know, so um, uh, that was, I don't know, that was eh. But um, the big story is another family story. And I like family stories because that's what makes it interesting. Solo Sokoa and his his buddy, his brother, little brother, I guess. Isn't that's that's plot two, right? Well, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I really don't think that they're fully blood related. Okay. Because it was, you know, Rikishi's is in Haku was um yes, yes. Tom was dead. They're not blood related, but they you know, they're just all real tight. All the Samoans. Okay. If, if I'm correct on that, I believe that's what I was reading. I love what they're doing. I love how they're bringing Jim. You got to believe that Jay's going to join Jimmy again. You got to believe that. That's just in their works because Solo looks like a bitch. And um, he looks horrible in a suit. He can't talk on the mic to save his ass. And Paul Heyman looks scared. And it was just. I mean, I I, I want to get back. I want to like that. I want to like the bloodline, the new stuff. Um, but um, Adrian Whisper says uh, the new belts for Raw look like a Jiffy Pop popcorn top after a pop after you pop the popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't wrong. You're not wrong. Oh um, man. So yeah, I mean, SmackDown was good. You know, we've seen Naomi and Bailey. That was fun. Oh, seeing Naomi back in there, back in there again. Um, but I, I, I gotta say, I loved when Damage Control was all running their mouth, and then you heard that music hit. I was like, yes. So I, oh. like I said, I said it. Her and Bianca were gonna team up. Yep. That was sick. That was sick. So, but um. I don't know. It's just it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens. What's the future of uh SmackDown and Raw? Uh where are they gonna go with this the draft? When is is the draft next week? It starts this Friday. This Friday, okay. Man, do you see a lot of mix up going on in that draft? That's where I would normally say no, but this time, man, this new era. Man, it, anything can happen, and I'm expecting anything to happen. Yeah, like now's the perfect time where Gunther's not a champion. Move him to SmackDown. If you're gonna take Cody Rhodes to SmackDown, you better move Gunther to, Gunther to SmackDown. Yep, you can have him face face off. It will build up a little story with those two. Yeah, you know, um. There's like I said, I I would like to prefer to see like a like a Tiffany Stratton. I I think she's great. I prefer to see her on a Raw. That would help build Raw up a little bit and give her a shot. You know, going at a title. Right. So I'm gonna send Adrian Whisper a podcast uh, and link to get on this. I want to share. I want him to share with us. Um, About the gauntlet match that we're going to see in um in June. So Adrian, if you're still there, click on that link and get in here. If you don't mind, Rico. Oh, by all means, man. Yeah, I I just like I said, there's a couple mix ups we can have happen to make it interesting. Yeah, I want to bring the big man on here to give his rundown of this uh, of his XIW show. But no, um. Yeah, it's a lot can happen. There's a lot of open areas for WWE and to to move with their stuff. And 
They are saying, though, I've got to say this, AEW had a match with Will Ospreay and um, and Danielson. They are saying that was match of the year already. No, no, Dave Meltzer, in other words, and for instance, said, might as well not even wrestle no more. <laughs> Don't wrestle for the next eight months because you already seen your match of the year. Let me tell you, they put on a show. Whisper, where'd you go? I'll have to check that out and see, man, because like I said, I just didn't want to pay for it, but <clears throat> Brian Danielson, I love that guy. Yeah. I love his wrestling. I, I just love him. He is just he's good all around. Yeah. Hundred percent. He is good and um and Will Osprey was a good signing for them. That really was. Yeah, hundred percent. So we got Raw tomorrow, or we got Raw talk. We talk Raw tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> lots going on for Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast. Uh, Rico is, I don't know if he'll be more available other than two days. Um, he has his new job that makes it easier for him to be home. Um, so that's good. Whisper, you back on here? Log in, man. There he is. There's the cat daddy. What's up, my What's brother? What's going on? So, uh, first of all, I need to introduce you to uh, my buddy Rico. That's my uh, son's. That's my. We share the same grandkids, so yeah. his daughter is my son's wife and stuff like that. So that's yeah. why we got this. Uh, we got this, tomorrow's show is Pops World Order. So it's just him and I. We talk uh, more wrestling and stuff like that. So I brought you on here, man, because I want you to talk about. XIW gauntlet that you guys are doing in June and yeah. what competitors are going to be in it. And just give us as a man that's running the show or partly running the show. What's your feelings when we're on the XIW event that we witnessed on Saturday? Well, to be honest with you, man, I, I can say it was nothing other than a success because the new new building, new first show of the year, which we should have done be our second show. We should have did one in February, but due to the travel lodge selling their the the venue, we had to find another one and it took four months to find it. We had a capacity, max capacity of three hundred and twenty people going in. When the fire marshal got there and our setup, it dropped it down to two hundred and twenty. We had hundred and fifty eight paid. So if you want my opinion on how the show is come June 15th, we're going to have that max capacity there because we locked in a whole lot of new people on Saturday night. Right. Right. I mean, storylines, talk about the storylines, my guy, you, uh, you guys created a lot of different storyline angles. And I mean, you had La Brava versus um, Erica, a, a new up and coming female wrestler. She put on a bang of a show. Yeah, they 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 tore the house down. I'll have to say that, but uh, we got more in in store for La Brava. We have uh Tony Storm supposed to be coming in in August, uh, facing La Brava for the XIW Women's Championship, and I, I'm really looking forward to that. And if we can, we're gonna have Erica back, and we're gonna make it a triple threat. So if if she signs in on that, then uh, I think that's gonna be one of the top contenders to get that actual best match of the night bonus. Yeah. And see what XIW does. Um, what I speed you up a little bit, Rico at the end of the night, um, Adrian gets on the mic and he goes through the, um, the matches and says, Hey, what was the crowd favorite? And the crowd gets to pick what the favorite wrestling match of the night is. And at the end of that, after they pick out who the wrestling, the wrestling match of the night is that group of wrestlers get a bonus upon what they are already going to get from um, XIW uh, management. So Nice. That's pretty cool. I that's would uh, not be lying if I said my company is probably the only company in all of independent wrestling that does that. That's so, sweet right there, man. No, so, uh, that's uh, after you make people shed tears. Oh, exactly, brother. We're about, <laughs> we're about making a moment and stirring up some fucking shit. He, he does a good job of it himself, but he still got a long way to go to catch up with Big Daddy Rabbit. <laughs> I was giving shit to Sal. I thought I had Sal. I think I'm in Sal's ear. Big Sal, Sal Tutorial. Mm -hmm. 
He uh, is along with. I don't know who was louder. You are the sound guy because both of y'all was popping all freaking night. <laughs> so Sal is under the, the control of John Saxon. Okay. So John Saxon is, I call him puppet boy, but Sal is huge. Sal's like six, three, two ninety. Don't need anything. Three ninety. I don't know how big that motherfucker is. Try six, two ninety. Two ninety. Dude's yep. a Foot shit six. house. So I'm just over there going, dude, Sal, man, you're good without, you don't need John. You don't need John, dude. And there's, I thought there was time where he was going to go, you're right. But I anticipate John Saxon wishing he was not part of XIW yeah. in a couple of months. <laughs> he doesn't need John Saxon. John Saxon needs him. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> That's yeah. the only way the dying breed is going to stay together. Granted, Vordell Walker will be back in June, who right. is another member of that dying breed faction. So it the heavyweight uh, gauntlet come yeah. June 15th is going to be full of some very big guys and some very mean guys. We might even have Eddie Torres back. We're not sure yet. We're trying to check on that. And he's wrestling now as, as a singles competitor not a tag team anymore with okay. state line so you know how dominating he was in the past yeah, yeah. i could only imagine him coming in with the mindset and focus of trying to win the heavyweight title it's slate in that will he be in that match uh yeah and this will be the only spoiler i give you <laughs> make him come in first make him all right Ooh. And I already stated at the show, Malik Avalon will be last. We got a gauntlet. How many? How many? How many guys are in this gauntlet? How many guys? Fifteen. Uh, I think there's uh gonna be eight guys in it. Eight guys. Okay. Eight guys. Yeah, yeah. and we're gonna do uh two at a time. Uh, no one else enters the ring until someone has been submitted or defeated or counted out or what have you. However, they lose, and then automatically whoever's left in the ring will have to face the next one and then the next one and then the next one till the last man standing and i have a feeling this is a good way to get rid of the dying breed if you follow what i'm saying i i couldn't really say that i would want to get rid of the dying breed just yet because we have some some very very young up and coming good guys that we're training at the moment and for those guys to be able to be that ultimate good guy, that protagonist has to have the antagonist. And mm -hmm. there's no one better at being bad guys on our roster than the dying breed. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That's true. I, I, I'm just going to call a spade a spade. Do I like them? No, I don't. But they're the guys right now. You know what I'm saying? Even though they don't have belts, they're the biggest guys on the roster. And when you're the biggest guy on the roster – you're either looking at it one or two ways. You're a big fish in a small pond or either you're a big bully in the courtyard. Which one have they proved to be? They're, they're not the big fish in a small pond because XIW is growing faster and faster every show. The bottom line is, is they know where they stand in this company. They know their value in this company. And without that antagonist, the, the company really can't make money with a, a protagonist without somebody to be his nemesis. There you go. And I can tell you what, one of their up and coming stars, Rico is, and I think he is, I, I give him shit. I can't stand the guy because he comes <laughs> off with the cocky ass attitude and it's just who he is. But there's a dude, Bubba Shaddix. That's my nephew, baby. One of the seven stiffs. Holla. You uh, can tell, you can tell that he is being trained or he's learning from, Big pop and whisper because this kid, and he's gotten. I would say this: he, from the first time I see them to get last on Saturday, worlds different. This kid can go. Well, yeah, but what, that attitude and cockiness is awesome, though, man. I love the heels. Well, what what everyone doesn't understand about Bubble, and that's my my blood nephew, is in order to get your character over it has to be an extension of who you are 
the closest thing to Bubble as a gimmick is him not being at a show. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bubba does, he is totally old school, even though he's only 27 years old. He's old school. He was trained old school. We made him this way for a reason. You won't never see him out there signing autographs. You won't never see him out there selling pictures. He says, I don't need to worry about selling gimmicks. He said, I make my money. I get paid. I don't have to go out there and suck nobody's dick and say, hey, buy a picture from me. And that's what he'll look at you and tell you. <laughs> Straight up, because uh, he's like, he reminded me, um, he had a towel over his head all day long. Reminded me of Taz, you know, walking around the towel, not even talking to nobody. I said hi to him from the announce state, from the, my table, didn't say a word, walked by me, walked by everybody, doesn't do it. So the gimmick or the, the thing that Whisper just said is true. He does, He lives it. That's how he is, and that's just he was. It is good. Um, so yeah, he's good. Well, you have to understand one thing as well. Bubba's been in the business for about twelve years now, thirteen years. Okay. <clears throat> Man, the forbidden zittles is off the freaking chart. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Florida and their medical cards, baby. Yes, sir. But yeah, Bubba. But given that opportunity to <laughs> show the office that he can carry the company. He can carry that division. He's always been the guy, hey, let's make them look better. Let's make them look better. You know what I'm saying? And he he got mad, left the States, went to Mexico, trained there for a couple of years, come back and was 10 tiers higher than what he was when he left. And he come back and he hit me up. He said, Unc, I'm back. I'm back. I said, back? What do you mean you back? He said, man, he said, I'm backing out more. He said, what's going on? I said, well, man, I'm kicking XIW off. We had a guy that no-showed or has canceled, and I need somebody to work Damian Wayne in our very first match. I said, uh, I know you're not heavyweight material. I said, but you can go, and we'll do what we can to make this – go further and uh as when he come back he said hell yeah he said i'll come back and he hadn't wrestled in three years all he did was train in mexico he didn't wrestle none he just trained and uh we brought him in and i'll be damned if he didn't take damian wayne almost to the brink you know what i'm saying yep. and uh we had already had plans for our middleweight division and it was going to revolve around at that time was uh bty uh zane stevens mm -hmm. Uh, million dollar mullet Zach Mosley uh, from Exotic Youth and Malik Avalon. Malik Avalon was actually when I first started running XIW was my first ever middleweight champion. He was the longest reigning middleweight champion until Zach Mosley won the belt, and he just happened to win that on a spoof. You know what I'm saying? But he was so dedicated to that middleweight division, it just kept carrying on and carrying on and carrying on. And he had the belt for a little over a year, year and a half. And uh, Malik took it over or took it from him. And he lost to my nephew Bubba. And I'm not going to say I wasn't uh, in his head when he pulled the bottle out. You know what I'm saying? Because like I told Bubba, it doesn't matter how well you wrestle. It doesn't matter what you do unless you can get those people invested in you. I said, and for you to get that, um, to, for you to make that happen, you're going to have to start going to some extreme measures, dude. I said, I don't get win at any cost. You go there and you make sure when you leave that building at the end of the night that nobody in that building talks about anybody but you. I don't give a shit what you have to do. That's what put me where I was at. That's what kept me at the top. I don't care if I opened the card or if I was main event. When I left there, they was talking about nobody but me. Because when I left there, it was balls to the wall. And they knew it. You know what I'm saying? And to me, my character in the wrestling, just like with Bubba, is not a gimmick. It's an extension of who I am. And I connect with the people. People see me and they're like, Oh man, I can, I can, I can feel what he's saying. I can understand what he's saying, which is another reason why the storylines that we do are elementary. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that's 
wove, woven into this and spun in to be all dramatic and everything, we tell stories that the audience can get invested in and can relate to without having to spell it out for them. And when we started this the other night, uh, or Saturday night, and me revealing John Saxon's biological son as our new commissioner, he knew we was going to cut a promo, but he didn't know that I was going to shoot. You know what I'm saying? And the whole thing was is if you want to do this, let's do this because I want everybody else in that audience ready to whoop your ass, not because you a prick, but because you're a sorry ass dad. How many other kids out here have been treated the same way? So let's expose you for what you are. And that was all a straight shoot. You know what I'm saying? His, his mother lived in Louisiana. Saxon was in Mississippi. Well, none of that would have ever took place if shit wouldn't have happened in Saxon's life and wrestling with his tag team partner that spun his life in a 180. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And from that moment on, Saxon wasn't a character for his actual name is Mark Thompson. It wasn't a character anymore. That was who he become. And for 30 years, that's all he, he knew. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it was always him chasing that dream to the next level, trying to get that contract. We, I wrestled with WWE on dark matches. He wrestled with WWE on dark matches and the they didn't want nobody that was smart. They wanted people that could control them. You know what I'm saying? What, right. what happened? There he goes. So, well, man, it's outward time to get off here. But I want Adrian Whisper XIW. Um, can you close the show? I can't hear you, man. Can you hear him? I don't know if he can. No, I can't hear him either. Can't hear you. There you go. Can you hear me now? Nah, something happened. Because the happened. screen went black and he came back and we couldn't hear him. So, um, huge pop wrestling fans, uh, we will have Adrian Whisper on again. I don't know. Thanks, man. We have, he'll, he'll be on to tell a story more about XIW come uh, last part of May first part of june um but uh rico till tomorrow man oh yeah excellent uh huge pop wrestling to talk uh raw tomorrow we will have the infamous cody Cornette with us on the show we will have um sin come back and adrian whisper is still trying to get his microphone or whatever here i don't know but um adrian if you can hear me we're signing off I will have you back on to continue your talk. I uh, appreciate you. Huge Pop Wrestling Podcast, guys. We're out. All my dogs, make some noise up in this house. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Because when your body hits the canvas, then your ass is not out. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Because when your body hits the canvas, then your ass is not God. Fight with Adrian Whisper is like a fight with the devil. Because when he's dealing with you, you cannot get on this level. Fight with Adrian Whisper is like a fight with a king. It's like a fight with an army They got the tanks and everything He's leaving bruises and stitches Possibly leaving you crippled Cause when he sets up the table And sends you straight through the middle Takes a good decree Beat that ass with a light bulb Leave a piece of glass embedded In the back of your skull who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Cause when your body hits the canvas, then your ass is knocked out. Who is in the house? Who is in the house? It's the gangster of destruction, so you know what's going down. And when the drive-by's coming, then you better hit the ground. Cause when your body hits the canvas, then your ass is knocked out.